to Adventures in Grace. This is Jim Hockaday. We're going to get back into our videos, our union with Christ. This is our series. But before we do, let me assure you the reasons why these videos are coming to you is so that you can develop a more tangible relationship with God. It's so wonderful when God becomes a part of your everyday life. And that by that I mean not only your involvement in talking with Him, but your listening to Him talk to you. Letting God come out of the pages of your Bible and actually begin to orchestrate His influence in every single thing you do. Number two, that we might get our prayers answered so that, number three, we can testify to others what the Lord has done. And, of course, it's always so wonderful to have fresh testimonies. And I've got another one right here I'm going to read you from the very beginning. And I think you'll really enjoy this. And this testimony says here, Recently, my CenturyLink Internet went down several times a day for about three weeks, along with slow speed. I then purchased Infinity Internet. They sent the activation kit with the wrong power cord, so they said they would send a new complete kit. When I did not get any further communication from them, I called to confirm the kit was actually on its way. This was all through chat sites. I was not able to make the connection, so called their equipment return number. Thankfully, I got a real person. I explained the situation. She said there was actually a repairman in the area this afternoon, rare to get that quick of a response, and he could drop off a new power cord. When he arrived at my door, I told him he was just to exchange the power cord. He said he would check my connections and set up. He found that my coax uh, outlet was not working. I told him there were some Xfinity wires in my garage, but I didn't know what they were. They were there when I moved into the house. He looked at them and did some adjustments, and now my coax works. Plus, he hooked up all my wires and activated my Xfinity account, and my Wi-Fi, and laptop, and my printer. He could do all this from his phone and made sure everything worked, and it does. I would have had to ask my son-in-law to help me as I'm not very techie. I told the repairman I thought God sent him. He chuckled. He even said I could let my dog in while he was there. I had to put her outside so she wouldn't bother him. He also said he usually doesn't work in this area. Maybe he was an angel. So isn't that a great grace story? Do you think the wrong power cord was in the box just so someone could come and connect all my stuff? I would never have known my coax cable was not working or that all those cords in the box in my garage were usable. I was going to disconnect them and throw them away. God is so good. I am looking forward uh, to hearing you when you're at Living Word Christian Center in Brooklyn Park, Minnesota. And so actually I was already there and enjoyed my time. But yes, of course, that's a great grace story. Just to watch each individual each week send in stories that are so vastly different. And yet the common denominator is they're actually participating with God, not only in inviting him to be a part of their lives, but looking for his involvement in their everyday going here and going there. This is so wonderful. Let it be an encouragement to everyone listening that this is the kind of relationship that Jesus wants us to have. When we look at the Lord Jesus and we see how he was constantly involved with the Father, doesn't he want us to have the same relationship? Well, Matthew 11, 27 to 30 in the Message Bible says this. Now Jesus resumed talking to the people, but now tenderly. The Father has given me all these things to do and say. This is a unique father and son operation coming out of father and son intimacies and knowledge. No one knows the son the way the father does, nor the father the way the son does, but I'm not keeping them to myself. I'm ready to go over them line by line with anyone willing to listen. Are you tired, worn out, burned out on religion? Come to me, get away with me, and you'll recover your life. I'll show you how to take a real rest. Walk with me, work with me, watch how I do it. Learn the unforced rhythms of grace. I won't lay anything heavy or ill-fitting upon you. Keep company with me and you'll learn how to live freely and lightly. Well, that basically says it all. And that's why we're doing these videos so that we can, in a sense, get ourselves out of the way so that God can do what he's always wanted to do. And that is influence us so greatly. Well, I'm looking over here in Galatians chapter 6, verse 14. We've been talking about our union with Christ. And oh, what an amazing thing it is to begin to realize we are sons of God through our union with Christ. We have victory in life through our union with Christ. We are anointed by God to live in this world beyond the harassments 
of sin, Satan, sickness, because of our union with God. And so even in the scripture that we're looking at in Galatians 6 and verse 14, in the Crescent Translation, listen to what it says. The things of the world have become dead to me, and I have become dead to the world. Now, in what manner would the world bother you if you were dead to the world and the world dead to you? See, this is a mindset of realizing how much Jesus really has paid the price where you can let go of your connection to the world. That if your connection to God is all that you have, wouldn't he then bring great influence into the world where you would find victory after victory instead of walking by the principles of the world, which has to do with what? The law or your works, your performance, how well you do. Well, what if you're not good enough to perform the task? You know, not everybody's able to do every single task. People are more qualified in some areas and less in another. But when you're connected to God, he makes all the difference. Look at what it goes on to say in the Ways translation. But never be at mind to boast of aught, save of the cross of our Lord Jesus Christ the Messiah, by whose death the world has died on that cross to me, and I have died to the world. Notice how emphatic Paul is about him seeing himself in Christ on that cross, dead to the world, and the world dead to him. And yet, when Jesus came alive, Paul sees himself alive unto Christ and unto God. This is the type of connection, folks, that we've always dreamed of, being able to hear him, feel him, see him, experience him, where he actually works on our behalf to change circumstances and bring about what you might call righteousness or godly results. I tell you what, going from sickness to health, going from poverty to having your bills paid, praise the Lord, going from confusion to peace of mind, all of this is just the beginning and the start of God living in your life. I love this right here. It says in the Bruce translation, But far be it from me to boast about anything except the cross of our head, Jesus Christ. That cross, I love this, forms a permanent barrier between the world and me and between me and the world. Look at exactly what Jesus is saying here through the Apostle Paul. A permanent barrier has been erected through the cross of our Lord Jesus Christ. What Jesus established on that cross is he absorbed all of your sin so that you, praise the Lord, would be free from it all. I want you to know that you're free today from the sin problem and from sin itself. We no longer have to be under the burden, under the bondage of sin. Thank God we can walk free and we can walk clear. I love that there's a permanent barrier barrier between the world and me and the and me and the world that means thank god i'm safe don't you know in the world we're living in today, all the harassments that are going on in this lifetime that it's wonderful to be able to say that i'm safe that i have a permanent barrier between me and the world and the world and me let's go on and see what else he says in galatians 6 and verse 15 in the amplified it says a new creation the result of a new birth and a new nature in Christ Jesus the Messiah. Now this is our union in Christ. Way's translation said circumcision is nothing. Uncircumcision is nothing. The, new, the creation of a new nature in us is everything. Oh folks, I'm telling you, you are not the same that you used to be. You are completely different. Jesus is alive in you and you are alive in him. You have a brand new, we talked about this, divine nature of God. That means the very substance and reality of God himself is now living in your spirit. What does this mean to the potential of you as a spiritual being? Well, you know, when Jesus raised us up, Galatians 2 and 6, he raised us up to sit in heavenly places. That wasn't to twiddle our thumbs. He raised us up to be a part of the authority that Jesus Christ has in the spiritual world. And because we still have physical bodies in this world, that means we become, if you will, a portal between both worlds. Think about that. Jesus said even to Nathaniel when he was calling his disciples, you're going to see a whole lot more, Nathaniel. You'll see angels ascending and descending upon the Son of Man. What was he saying? He was saying that I am like a portal 
because my spirit is connected to God, my flesh is connected to the world, that means I become a bridge between the two worlds and God Almighty and angels are going to be ascending and descending upon me Meaning I'm going to walk in a place that most people will not walk in. But on this side of the covenant, Jesus has come to live in us. This is the great mystery of the church. Colossians 1.27, Christ in you, the hope of glory. What does this mean? The potential of what Jesus accomplished on the earth becomes our new potential in this earth today. It doesn't matter who scoffs at us. They don't understand the principle of this redemption. This redemption isn't to make you the same and then hopefully someday chariots come out of heaven and take you on over to glory. This wonderful redemption is to redeem you so thoroughly that even while you're still on the earth, you're able to experience the glory of heaven above. I'm going to go on over here into WAN translation. I like this so much. It says the one thing of importance is that we should be created afresh in a new order of existence. We are in a new order of existence. This new order of existence is from the inside to the outside. Not from the outside in. I mean, you can work as hard as you want to work the rest of your life at trying to perfect who you are. But that doesn't mean it affects who you are spiritually. No, the spiritual connection through Jesus Christ once and for all connected us to God and made us, if you will, God, men, and women. I know that sounds really strange. You'll get persecuted for saying things like that because people don't understand what that means is now that God is living in you. Greater is he that's in you than he that's in the world. There's more to you than just you. Now God is a part of everything you do. That means there is an element of heaven, of God, now at your disposal for you to experience, like Jesus did, supernatural impartations and intervention from the spiritual world into this world to bring change into your situations. Even if that change is as simple as things going so right that God puts people in places where it just seems like the moment you need somebody, that repairman is right there in the area. Immediately he's at the house. And instead of just doing a couple of things, which is what you expect nowadays, you're, you're happy when they do exactly what you expected them to do. Let alone if somebody actually wants to go beyond that expectation and check everything out and make sure that everything's running. You know, that's a grace story. That's about letting God become a part of your day. And then the benefit is your day turns out to be so much better than the normal. Colossians 2 and verse 20, Wood trans translation said, You are dead with Christ to the principles which govern the world of men. The Amplified said, if then you have died with Christ to material ways of looking at things and have escaped from the world's crude and elemental notions and teachings of externalism, why do you live as though you still belong to the world? What is Paul trying to get across to us? That there is a clean break from the world. We are no longer in the old house, in the old land. We're in a new house, in a new land. We are temples of the living God. God lives in us. And through this union, we have the potential for a brand new kind of life. Brand new expectations. Brand new testimonies. Just gets better and better every day. Amen. Well, look at what it says here in Connie Bear translation. If then you died with Christ, you put away the childish lessons of outward things. Oh, folks, you know, we've tried so hard. Don't you know your limitations outwardly? I mean, you may not want to give up, but you know, if you look back at your track record, your history, you pretty well can figure out what you can do and what you can accomplish. And when you really need to cry out, put up your white flag and say, help, I need help. If we can just get used to letting God do everything while we trust him and, and cooperate with him, we will see so many wonderful signs and wonders in our life. And it doesn't have to be on Sunday at 10 o'clock in a building. It can be all day long, every single day. Come on, this is a wonderful thought for you to put into your heart and allow your mind to feed on that this is real Christianity. Colossians 3.1, some other great scriptures. It says in the NAB translation, Since you have been raised up in company with Christ, 
Set your heart on what pertains to higher realms, where Christ is seated at God's right hand. Did it say higher realms? Yes, it did. There are higher realms, and heaven is the highest of the highest realm. Set your mind on things that are above. Why? Because you've been raised up with him. You are no longer just of this world. You now have citizenship in the other world as well. Oh, I like this so much that let's look at Lovett translation. Shift your ambitions to heaven. Your master reigns there. That's the place to invest. Invest. How do you invest in the things that are in heaven? Well, notice shift your ambitions. Shift your thoughts. Consider things that are above. All this has to do with meditation. The way you see yourself, the way you experience God comes from your meditation. Begin to talk along these lines. I'm from above. I'm not from beneath. Amen. I'm living in the world, but I'm not of the world. Just like Jesus said, he raised me up to sit together with him. That means I'm seated in heavenly places. There is divine authority that has been granted to me to use while I'm on this earth, just like Jesus did. Jesus was granted authority as the son of man to have judgment. And he brought judgment not on the people. He brought judgment on the works of the devil and the devil himself as he destroyed principalities and powers. He disarmed them. That's right. Yes, he did. Let's go on to Barclay's translation. It says, if then you have been raised to life with Christ, and we have, your heart must set on the great realities of that heavenly sphere where Christ is seated at the right hand of God. Your constant concern must be with heavenly realities, not worldly trivialities. Wow, did you hear that? Worldly trivialities. Now think about all the things that we can fuss about, become concerned about, have anxiety about, and God calls them worldly trivialities at the expense of heavenly realities. And what makes the difference? What you set your mind on. We're sharing these things about our union with Christ to give you a change of perspective. I'll share this real quickly. How you do life is how you'll do faith. If your faith isn't working, it goes back to how you do life. How you do life is wrapped up in your perspective. And today we've given you, and, to, and the next video, we're going to give you some more opportunities to set your mind on things that are above. Well, go to Adventures in Grace. YouTube channel and subscribe. Bring other people there. Let them know how good these videos are and how it's helping us and that we share these testimonies so people can see that it's actually working. You can find us also on Jim Halkaday Ministry Facebook page and follow us. But by all means, go to the website and find jhmi at jimhockaday.com, our email, and send us in your grace stories. God bless you until next time.